LUTs or lookup tables can allow you to add color grades to punch up raw footage or add filmic looks. But where do you find new LUTs and how can you utilize them in your own renders? Let's find out. Hey Motioneers, EJ here. This tutorial comes from our advanced course, Cinema 4D Ascent, and in it, we're gonna talk all things LUTs. Now to follow along, you'll need to have access to Cinema 4D. Before we begin, don't forget to download the project file so you can join in on all the fun. If you're familiar with Magic Bullet or DaVinci Resolve, you've probably heard of the term LUT before. Now LUTs, or look up tables, not looking up at tables, that makes zero sense, are a table of numbers that convert color values in an image or a frame. You can basically think of them as color grades that you can save and share and utilize across many apps. So things like Redshift, After Effects, you can use these same color grades across many, many apps. And in 3D, it's becoming more and more common to add these lookup tables, these color grades, and bake them directly into your render or utilize them in your Redshift render view and kind of audition different color grades, adjust them, and be able to try out a bunch of different looks. So to apply a LUT, we're going to go to our Redshift menu, head on down to Redshift render view, fire that up, and to apply a LUT and reveal some other color correction settings, we're gonna click this sneaky little gear that's hiding all those settings from us. So we're gonna click it and uh, here you go. Here's our LUT controls, our color controls. Uh, we have a different display mode. You can see what this looks like in linear mode, sRGB, adjust the gamma, all that good stuff. I'm gonna come back to LUT very shortly. I'm just gonna cover all these other settings super, super quick. Now to activate something like color controls here, I'm just gonna check that box to turn it on. You can see that basically this is your After Effects curve adjustment here, which is really cool, but it's just you know built into Redshift. There's also an option like this inside of the Cinema 4D picture viewer, which is really cool. Just the contrast, exposure. So all that's in the color controls. I'll turn that off, twirl that up. Let's go to photographic exposure and check that on. Here, you can adjust your exposure based on photography uh, values like f-stop and white point and uh, vignette. That's where you'll find vignetting in here, but I'll just twirl that up, uncheck that. Let's move on to Bloom. Bloom is really fun. You can think of this as your like built-in After Effects glow effect, where it takes the overbright areas of your scene and applies some glow. Again, just like After Effects glow. Get some super disco looking uh, effects going on there. Really cool. I'll uncheck that. Let's go on to Flare. And you have to wear 18 pieces, of course. But what Flare does, if I bring this Flare threshold down pretty far, is it also takes those overbright areas and adds these lens flares, which is really nice. So Flare intensity, the size, getting kind of kind of weird looking there. Looks like uh, you're having a hallucination and you're seeing a lucky cat. That might work for you, I don't know. I'm just gonna uncheck the Flare. And last I'll go to the Streak, which is going to add a streak kind of like what you would see in anthropomorphic lenses. So you can see what that's going on there. We've got these really cool streaks. It's really nice. Again, we've got the, the disco, disco feel, disco vibes to the lucky cat. All right, so we covered a lot of those settings. Let's go back to LUT. I'm gonna turn it on. Now in this menu here, you can actually add your own. There's built in Redshift LUTs that are in here. If I just delete this option right here, you can see that there should be an actual folder path in this LUT location that will direct you to the LUTs that are actually built in to Redshift. Uh, so you don't have to like buy any or anything like that. For me, I'm on my Mac, so my LUT location is in Applications, Redshift, Data, and LUT. Now, if I click this button with the dots, Basically what you can see is that LUT files are either in .cube or .3dl. And you can see that here is, you know, my, my applications, Redshift, Data, LUT 
folder, you can see all of these .cube files. Now on your computer, you might just want to go and search to see what kind of cube LUTs you might have. So I'm just going to type in dot C-U-B-E. And here you'll see that I actually have some from Octane. So Octane comes with its own uh, cube files as well. So here's where you can just like choose individual LUTs. So I'll choose this Kim Amlan, see what that looks like. So that's pretty dark. You can adjust the LUT strength here. We can also go and adjust the LUT file here. So it actually look at your different LUTs that are within that same folder structure, which is really nice. So you can see what all these do. And actually a lot of these, the Ectochrome, uh, which is kind of interesting. There's also this Agfa Color Optima that you can also find in Octane. So really cool stuff. So you can kind of, again, you can audition all these different lookup tables and color grades and get these kind of filmic effects, which is really nice. I always like to audition a whole lot of them. You know, some of these totally change the vibe of the scene. Uh, I also have some, if I go to .cub, I'll go all the way down. You can see that I have a lot from uh, Grayscale Gorilla. Grayscale Gorilla has a lot of really cool LUTs as well. We got this beach haze, check that out feeling really beachy, a little beachy uh, lucky cat there. Um, and again, if you choose a LUT that's in a folder structure, it's gonna look at all the other ones inside that same folder. So we can see what this one looks like. Battle, warmth, Seattle warmth. I can't really read that. Pulp, subtle, I don't know if that's Pulp Fiction, but different, like different film uh, names. So Your Majesty, that might be from, a, I don't know, The Crown, who knows, who knows. Swampy, why not Swampy? Let's go Swampy Cat. So all that to say is there's all these different types of LUTs that you can load up in Audition using the uh, built-in LUTs that are within Redshift and available from many sites like Grayscale Gorilla. Uh, that's always an option. But this is all to say I wouldn't necessarily bake in these LUTs into this render, but if you did, have this LUT applied and checked on, and you went ahead, changed your render to Redshift, of course, and then went to Render to Picture Viewer, it's gonna bake in any of these effects that you currently have turned on. If you go to your render settings, you can see Redshift Post Effects. You can see that LUT is enabled, and this Redshift Post Effects render effect is enabled as well. So it's kind of like if you had any post effects like ambient occlusion or GI using standard or physical render, all of those would be applied to your final render and baked in. And that's not necessarily the best course of action. What I would recommend is to have maximum flexibility is, is not apply it in here addition, but then make note of the LUT that you really like that you applied in Redshift. And then what you could do is just go ahead and apply this in post, whether in uh, After Effects or whatever. So I would just render out this raw render and apply the LUTs in post. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to apply a LUT in post using After Effects, Premiere, or Photoshop. Now one thing to note about LUTs is any changes in that LUT strength or anything like that, you can't actually resave that out as a LUT. Like a LUT's a LUT and it it's, remains that LUT file, okay? So here we are in After Effects and I just have a raw render from Cinema 4D. That means we did not apply a LUT or any color correction using Redshift. And what we're gonna do is just do it in post like we typically would do our color correction with 3D renders. So what I'm gonna do is first go and add an adjustment layer just so I can apply a LUT effect to the adjustment layer and then I can use uh, the opacity, just hit T to bring up the opacity to bring that down, okay? So what I can do is just select the adjustment layer, hit enter and just rename this LUT, okay, adjustment. And uh, to apply a lot, it's really easy. I'm just gonna go to the effects and presets menu, just type in LUT, and that's gonna bring up the apply color LUT utility effect, which you might have never have paid attention to before. But if I go and click and drag and apply this to the adjustment layer, and what it's gonna do is allow you to go ahead and dig through your files and choose uh, a LUT. Okay, so I have a bunch of LUTs here. If I choose in the dot cube, if I do like blue green, you can see what that looks like. I can adjust the opacity overall. If I wanna choose a different LUT, I can just go into my apply color LUT effect and choose a different LUT. I can do like everyday CC, you can see that's pretty dark. 
just that. So another thing you could do is like you say you auditioned a LUT in Redshift, just remember the name and where it, where the location is. And you could just easily like cool beans. Yeah, it was definitely cool beans. There it is. And you can apply it here. You know, it looked good because you tested it out in Redshift. And now you could just apply that to the raw render and have the full flexibility of if you are indecisive and you change your mind and you found that maybe not cool beans, but we need uh, heroic warmth instead because our cat is so uh, lucky, but yet so heroic. Boom, you can do that. So it's always good to, to stay flexible. So that was pretty easy in After Effects. Let me go ahead and show you how to do it in Premiere. Now to apply a LUT in Premiere, you're just gonna make sure you're in your color space and select the tracker or still that you want to apply your LUT to. Go on over to your Lumetri color Go to creative and under look, just go to browse. You're going to see there's all these LUTs already built in, but if we go to browse, we can go ahead and enter in our dot CUB and search all over the place. And there are our cubes and we can go ahead and choose one of them. Let's do a uh, after school special. See what that looks like. And that's that you can adjust the intensity of that LUT effect by using the intensity slider here. And that's that's basically it. Easy, easy, lemon squeezy. Now to apply LUT in Photoshop, it's fairly easy as well. What we're gonna do is go to our window menu, go to adjustments, and right here is this color lookup icon. I'm gonna hit that. And what it's gonna do is create an adjustment layer automatically. And here we can apply a built-in LUT if we want to. And then we can go ahead to this layer, adjust the opacity for the strength of that overall effect. We can also go up to the top and just load 3D LUT. And this is going to give you your file navigation window that we can go into a LUT folder. And voila, we can access all of our Redshift LUTs, use this filmic high contrast, and again, adjust this using the opacity. So super easy ways to be able to load up LUTs, not only in Redshift, but also in After Effects, Premiere, and Photoshop. Now, one final thing I'll add to this whole LUT conversation that while it's great to use LUTs to audition looks in your render view, it's typically not recommended that you actually render with those lookup tables or those color grades actually baked in. And why that is, is that, you know, clients, they're going to ask for some kind of change. And if it's something like, well, I don't like that much contrast or I don't like that bluish hue. You know, if you already baked in that color grade, you're kind of left with no other option than to re-render your entire animation. Now, if you actually rendered out your animation without any of that grading, you could easily apply that grade in Fusion or in After Effects. So while it's great to bake it in and render for maybe tests to show a client, really for your final render, you wanna have the maximum flexibility, render it without any color correction, do it all in post, and in your actual final render, give some color grade uh, leeway. So that means, again, not using 100% black colors, 100% white colors, having those areas that you can crush those values again in post. All right, and that, that completes my little PSA. Let's open up a lot of options for establishing the tone and the mood of a render, and you'll quickly learn to love them. Do you have a favorite LUT that you absolutely love using? Be sure to share it in the comments below. And if you wanna learn more about 3D, check out Cinema 4D Ascent, our interactive course available at School of Motion. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll always be notified when we drop new tutorials. Thanks for watching.